I went back to my vehicle and uh, I was about to open up a, a meal when I heard a gunshot that went over our heads from the right to the left. I immediately stepped from behind my vehicle and my Marines were already discharging their weapons towards the protesters. I unslung my weapon and I put the weapon up into my, my shoulder and I began to fire. When everything was said and done, we uh, went and did a reconnaissance of the bodies. We were looking for weapons. And I remember looking at the bodies. They were wearing the traditional uh, jolly bond, white jolly bond. And uh, they were just completely soaked with blood. And I remember I was looking at the bodies. And I'm looking for weapons, I'm looking for weapons, and I don't see any weapons. And then I look up, and about 50 meters away from the protesters was some RPGs that were lined up against the wall. And I thought to myself, they had the capability to fire at us if they wanted to, but they didn't. So that means that they were holding a protest, a peaceful protest. And then all of a sudden in your mind, you realize that you just murdered some people. 20 minutes later, a car sped into our checkpoint area and uh, we discharged our weapons and come to find out that it was innocent life again. And then another one happened. And then another one happened. By the last one, I had an occupant of the vehicle asking me, why did you kill my brother? We didn't do anything. We're not terrorists. I was so devastated my uh, my commanding officer, Captain Schmidt, he came up to me and he said, Staff Sergeant, I said, what's wrong? What's wrong? You look, you look a little under the weather. And I said, well, today's been a bad day, sir. We've killed a lot of civilians. And he said, no, today's a good day. When he said that, I realized that I was in the wrong place. That... Maybe I wasn't cut out for the Marine Corps. When I was in Iraq, I didn't want somebody sending my ass six-week-old stale brownies or a five-minute calling card. You can't even get a dial tone in Iraq with a five-minute calling card. I wanted them to get me and my friends' asses out of there and for none of us to die for no reason. You know, I've, I've never wanted to hurt a person in my life, you know, like... If something happens, something happens. But most I've ever done is get into fights or anything like that. Um, I've been to Iraq. I'm not even infantry, you know. I'm trained on my weapon, but I'm not trained to, you know, go out and just shoot somebody, you know. And we had had two occasions where we got fired upon, and me and the three other people that were on the bridge had to fire at this person, and we have killed two people, you know. I'm, I'm a mechanic, you know, I'm not supposed to be going out there killing people. I kill two people and I don't like it. I was like, I'm not trying to do that anymore. And I'm sick to death of, of, of being told how much better the Iraqis' lives are, how there they're are places who have fresh water who've never had it. Well, whoop dee, you know, they... Uh, uh, List, America, list the problems we have in the United States of America uh, that really are serious problems that need to be addressed. Um, things like health care and, 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 uh, and education and taking care of our military in a real way. Um, what if somebody came to us and said, we're going to fix all of these, I mean, which is not the promise we've made to the Iraqis. We're going to get you some things, you know, life's going to be better. But if somebody straight up and said, we're going to fix all of these, I mean, irreversibly, and really fix them. The only thing is, we're going to kill 
tens of thousands of you. We're not going to tell you who it is. Would you sign on to it? It might be your mom. I mean, okay, fresh water is great now, especially if you've never had it. Is it worth your mother's life?